Hello, welcome back. <laughs> I thought I was through, but I have to make more videos. At least this was going to be part four. And we're talking about the illegal invasion of the Honduras caravan, okay, into the United States. Although Mexico tried to stop them, but they broke down the gates and wounded the the policemen and the military throwing rocks and everything. But President Trump said, if they throw rocks at our military and at our policemen, consider the rocks as rifles, okay? Now, so many people have problems with that. And I can understand I had problems with the two at one time. But I said, I'm just going to let God be God. Okay, but what we're going to be talking about today, the reason I'm coming back is because, you know, we're talking on Facebook and the precious people, I just love them and I, I understand that they think that I'm wrong and I think that they're wrong about some things and they don't think that I'm wrong about all things, but some and vice versa. That's why we have the word of God to try to refute every issue, not what we think, but what the word of God says. They're saying that some of the things that I'm saying are from the law and we don't live under the law anymore, okay? And I agree with that to a certain point. But what I'm going to do is talk to us a little bit about what Jesus said about the law. And we're going to go to the New Testament so that we can help you to understand, those of you who don't already know. Now, you know a lot of you know more than I know. And so I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the little bit that I know I want to impart according to what is written in the Word of God. Okay? So let's get started. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 5. And let's read exactly. This is going to be red letter. Matthew 5, starting at verse 17. This is Jesus talking, teaching about the law. And I'm reading from the New Living Bible, okay? I memorize my scriptures from the King James Version. But since a lot of my people, when I'm out on the streets and witnessing, they, we don't understand the King James, so I always take along my New Living. And my Spanish Bible, because there are some Hispanics that we talk to that don't understand it. And so we have to do it in Spanish too. All right, here we go, precious. This is English. Verse 17 through verse 20. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So, if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So we got to get it right. You know, we can be righteous, righteously wrong. I guess that's what you would say. See, we can think we're right, but that doesn't mean that we are if the word of God is not backing it up. Now, let's go on further, still dealing with Jesus. People are always trying to trap Jesus. So let's see what it's going to say in Matthew chapter 22, beginning with 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees <laughs> with the reply, they met together to question him again. And one of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? 37. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Now, we're talking about based on really the Ten Commandments. He didn't come to destroy the law of Moses. He gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And see, eventually I'm going to have to make this video about God and Jesus are the same. Okay? All right. But right now we're continuing on about the law. The Ten Commandments that's found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Jesus did not come to abolish that. The only law that you don't really see is about the Sabbath today. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Because you're going to find in uh, Colossians, he is that Sabbath. Okay? Jesus is the Sabbath. But all of the law and the prophets are on him. Okay? So he didn't come to destroy. When you look at the first five commandments, it's about God's relationship toward man. We're talking about an exodus. And the last five of those uh, ten commandments would be man's relationship with man. And we're talking about mankind, humankind. I'm not going to get caught all up. You didn't say woman. No, I didn't. He says, let us make man in our image. Woman, you're in it. W-O-M-A-N. That man onto it, okay? So you're going to have to go with me. Now, so we, we understand that. Now, we're going to go on because I got to go back to Matthew and I'm going to Matthew chapter 4. After Jesus was baptized by John and God, the voice of God, his father. Now, okay, we say they're all going to be one, but let's just look at it the way that it's said. The voice of God was heard saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, that was validation. God validated Jesus. And then the spirit ascended, resting upon his shoulder. Because John said, I didn't really know who he was until I saw the spirit descending out of heaven like in the form of a dove and resting upon him. And then I knew that that was the Messiah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, immediately after he was baptized, <laughs> let's see what it says in Matthew chapter 4, starting with verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit, by that Spirit, okay, into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. You know, a lot of times we think when something terrible comes upon us, we think the devil is doing it. But this said the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And now, for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No! The scripture says, the rhema word of God says, not the logos, the rhema, okay? The scripture says, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That was, he was quoting the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Jesus was using the Old Testament. And people are saying, telling me, you can't use that because that's under the law. This was under the law, was Jesus is quoting. Okay. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. See, the devil knows the scripture too. That's why we need to get in the word of God so we can refute the devil with the word of God. He was quoting from Psalm 91, okay? But Jesus went right back to him with another scripture. Jesus responded, The scripture also say, You must not test the Lord your God. Jesus quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. That is the Old Testament, my dear friends, my dear Facebook friends. I love you, and I hope a lot of you really know that I do, okay? Verse 8. Next, the devil took him to a peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. 
I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. That's all he wants. Somebody to serve him. No, we're going to serve the living God. All righty. Verse 10. Jesus, red letter. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. I had to look up all of these scriptures in the Old Testament because I know exactly about where they would be. And I just go, look, I've been in this word for so many years. I tell you, I read all the way from Genesis all the way through the map, just studying in different versions of the Bible. You see, and praise the Lord Jesus. He did not come to destroy the law, okay? Because you can also find it in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. Again, that's in the, uh, the commandments. Verse 11. Then the devil went away, and the angels came and took care of him. Now, you're going to find that in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, the same passage. Luke talked about it. Mark did talk about it, but he only just mentioned a couple of verses, but Luke uh, broke it down. Luke said, the devil left him until a more opportune time, or in the new living, until a better opportunity, okay? So, precious people, you will, we won't ever be trying to, uh, the, the devil is not going to ever leave us alone, you know, because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and to deceive. Oh, he has some many people deceived. They're believing that right is wrong, and they're believing that wrong is right. But God warned us about that in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20, okay? Woe be unto you when that day comes. Well, it's woe unto us because I'm telling you, it is just, it's here right now. Okay, now, so we can see that um, Jesus is not trying to destroy the law and he's using it. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do 1 Corinthians chapter 10, okay? And the reason I'm going to do that is because this is what Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, okay? That this was written for our example. People, if we don't know the Old Testament, we won't even know what Jesus is talking about a lot of times. You won't even know what the religious leaders are talking about. You won't know what Paul is talking about. You won't know what any of the writers are talking about. See, because see, they had the law when Jesus came, but they didn't have the New Testament. The law is all they had, okay? All right, and now remember he said, I didn't come to destroy the law of Moses, nor the prophets, but I came to fulfill. Okay, precious people? Now, let's look at this chapter 10, and we're going to close this out. 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. Now, let's look at that. All of them were guided by the cloud that stood over them by day, and it was as a pillar of fire by night. You will find that in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. It's going to be there. Now, I'm not going to have time to read all of that, but I'm going to give you the references. That's the Old Testament, okay? Then about walking on dry ground, chapter 14, verse 22, but you can also see it on, in verse 29. Now, remember, this is Exodus. You look, at, look that out, and he said, now, this is why this was written. Now, watch this. They all did that. Verse 2. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. So when they walked through the Red Sea on dry ground, that was a form of baptism. They were all baptized into Moses' baptism. Verse 3. All of them ate the same spiritual food. That manna, okay? And all of them drank that same spiritual water. They got the water from the rock. All right. 
you will see in Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, and also verse 35, it's going to talk about the manna that God rained down from heaven to give them food. Exodus chapter 17, verse 6, you're going to read about the water from the rock. But you can also see that in Numbers chapter 20, verse 11, water from the rock. Okay, now here we go. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them. And that rock was Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them. And their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. You don't believe it? Look in Numbers chapter 14. If we, I mean the entire chapter has to tell you, it's going to tell you all about it. Everything that I'm reading is almost like chapters worth. How are you going to know it? If the law, we don't have to be dealing with the law anymore. Okay. I, I didn't come to destroy the law of Moses, not any of the prophets. Precious people, let's listen to Jesus, what he says, okay? And by the way, and here's one that's coming to my mind. It's going to be uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? We're under grace now. We don't have to do the law. Yes, we understand that. But grace doesn't give you a right to sin. So shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. No. No, 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 no. No. Just because grace is here doesn't mean that we can continue to do what we want to do and say, here, forgive me. Here, forgive me. A lot of this is premeditated. Premeditated sin. Now, well, we don't know how long God. God is long suffering, but he's not forever suffering. You better ask somebody. Okay, you better ask somebody. Okay. Now watch here. They were scattered in the wilderness. Look at Numbers chapter 14, all of it, verses 1 through 45. These things happen as a warning to us. How in the world are we gonna know it if we don't if we're gonna throw away the old testament? These things happen for a warning to us. So that we would not crave evil things as they did, or worship idols as some of them did, as the scriptures say. The people celebrated with feastings and drinking, and they indulged in pagan revelry. That's like wild partying and all of that stuff like people are doing right there. And drunkenness and all of that stuff. And we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did, causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. Yes, it was under the law, but the God we still serve, according to Malachi 3, 6 says, I am God and I change not. That's why we can trust him. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same today as he was on yesterday, and he's going to be that way tomorrow. So we can understand his track record and know what to do, okay? Now, you're going to find that in Exodus chapter 32, when they, Moses went up to get the law to Mount Sinai, and then the people rose up the blade. And that's when they made the golden calf, okay? Yeah. God overthrew over 23,000 of them. Verse 9, nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and then died from snake bites. You're going to find that in Numbers chapter 21, verses 5 and 6. The snakes were coming to bite the people, and, and, and they were dying like flies. But God told Moses what to do. Precious people, how are you going to know that if you're going to throw away the law? And don't grumble as some of them did, and then were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. And oh, we're surely living at the end of time. But oh, God is delaying his time because he's trying to give some of you a chance to repent and get it right. You got to repent of your sins. Confess them. Lord, I'm sorry. I need a Savior. I need Jesus. Thank you for sending him to die in my place. I'm the one that was supposed to be in on that cross, but he took my place and he died for me. I accept 
him as my savior. I renounce my sins. I go to sin no more. Live in me. Let your life live in me. Because look, if God, if the life of Christ is living in you, and if you crucify yourself, then you are dead and Jesus Christ can't sin. So who's doing the sinning? Apparently, if you're still sinning, you're not dead. Okay, precious people, let's get it right and go be able to live with Jesus forever and forever and forever. Now, I'm stopping here. That's enough. We have enough. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father God, that this word is for somebody. And look, oh, I'm not through. There's too much to talk about under the law. Love you. Bless you. Bye-bye. Until the next video. <laughs>